Amazing. So here we are with another episode of the Coming Cosmic to You podcast. And today we have Lisa on and she was just asking me before we went live how far out we can go on this uh, conversation with the metaphysical stuff. So I'm really looking forward to going as far out as you want, Lisa. So I don't know if you want to um, introduce yourself and tell people who you are and what you do. Thank you so much for having me, Louise. And I am really thrilled to be here because I, as I was saying when before we uh, started uh, the podcast, I lived two lives and I have had to for about 25 years. And um, I remember after my divorce, my daughter said to me, I don't know who you are anymore. I said, isn't that awesome? <laughs> <laughs> because I had to hide so much of who I was and I played this persona for everyone because every time I started to really truly be me people didn't understand me and I felt like this outsider so um, to give people a little background about myself about 20 well as a young child I had minor learning disabilities and I I remember being in kindergarten and everyone could do their maths and they could do they could write and they could read and I was lost and so I grew up thinking that I wasn't smart and Every summer I spent in summer school and I just struggled a lot, had very low self-esteem and gave my power away to everyone who I thought was smarter than me, which was pretty much everyone. Mm. And so where I went from there was um, I got married. I went to college, but got married young, had my children. And by the time I was 38, I had a nervous breakdown and I was suicidal. I was going to therapists two to three times a week and no one was helping me. And suddenly I uh, was introduced to someone who was a hypnotherapist. And I was like, are they going to make me quack like a duck? And <laughs> I I had a session and she was also an angel messenger. And I was like, that's a thing. Like there's beings around you that talk to you and you can have these experiences. I was floored. So I started studying with her and because of her, she opened my world. Um, and it was interesting because I grew up Jewish, so I didn't have any experience with Jesus. And we were doing um, Doreen Virtue's work. Are you mm. familiar with her, the angel messenger yeah. work? And uh, I was going through this book and we got to every week we had to read about seven different ascended masters. And then everyone would ro report in after they they um, prayed and asked for guidance. And we would all come in and say these miracles that would happen. So I asked uh, Jesus, I got to the J's. I'm like, I don't know anything about you. You know, I'd love for you to, uh, to work with you for the week. I had a brand new set of angel cards and I opened them up and looked at them. And they were all these beautiful illustrations. I asked for a sign who was with me and I opened the cards again. Oh, they're in their other room. Um, there was a white card that said God on it with red, uh, border, but all the other cards had, uh, illustrations on it. And I was like, wow, what's up with that? And then I, I chalked that up to coincidence and my, um, daughter was, we were at a ski mountain and my daughter had to go get her, um, her boots fitted as she was getting lessons. And I was at the base of the mountain. Saturday morning, thousands of people around me, or hundreds at least, and um, there was this heavy metal rock and roll music playing from the speakers, and I was standing there, and all of a sudden, this song called Christ Love came on. I was completely enveloped in just love, just pure love, and I I was taken aback. I, I don't even know how long that was. The sun came out. It was just beaming on me, and then it was like it stopped and then the heavy metal music came back on and, and all these people were around me. And I was like, oh, okay. I'm not sure what this is about, but I'm about to get on a ride. And and the ride it's been. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. And the fun never stops, right? The ride never ends. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't. And um, so, it, you know, years later, uh, after my divorce, um, I was going through a very difficult time and I was sobbing and I had this voice in my head it was snarling and growling and it said, be not afraid. I'm here to teach you courage, strength and access to your own wisdom. I want you to see 
see the world through my eyes. Don't worry, everything's going to be okay. And I hadn't painted in 10 years. And I got called to pull out my um, my paints and I painted this lion. And I was like, what is that? And it was this, and I realized afterwards it was a lioness and I put this big heart on her head and gold eyes. And then I didn't think anything of it. And then I went on to go to a um, herbalist conference and I'd signed up for an Egyptian shamanism class and a woman was holding the book in the belly of Sekhmet. I was channeling Sekhmet, who is an ancient Egyptian goddess. And um, she, there, there's many other stories, but she's taken me many places and it's been an extraordinary journey. Oh, wow, I love that. Yeah, the um, ancient Egyptian energy is just off the charts, isn't it? Yes, it is. Have yes, you been to Egypt? I have. I have. She brought me there. Oh, wow. So beautiful. And yeah, you the, book as well, don't you? Did she yeah. guide you to write the book as well? Or how did that come into play? So what happened was for 15 years, um, I had people telling me every time I get in front of a psychic, they say, where's your book? Where's your book? I'm like, I am a terrible student. Who would want to write, read a book that I had to say anything? And uh, I really struggled with it. And um, finally, two years ago, I said, enough. I was getting this really strong pull, but I had all these blocks and these beliefs. So I sat down and I used my own techniques because I actually help people release their blocks and keep them, they keep them from achieving their goals. I was like, duh, Lisa, it's time to do on <laughs> yourself what you do for others. So I made a list of all of the things that I believed about myself and I released them one by one by one. And then I had just gotten involved with a Ho'oponopono group, which was a for ancient Hawaiian forgiveness prayer and started forgiving myself and others because I had a lot of resentment and anger. I had a, a stack of index cards that was that thick of people that I was angry at and I was very much feeling like a victim. I released it all. And then all of a sudden the title of my book came and then I sat down and I couldn't stop writing. So the title of my book is In Every Belief is a Lie. And I don't know if you see my fingers crossed um, when you were a child, if you crossed your fingers, then the, the lie didn't count. Mm. So I, I ended up writing this book about um, my own personal journey, but also of tools and techniques that I've used over, you know, how I um, found these things that saved my life. Because when I was in that dark place, I remember thinking, there's got to be other people who are going through the same thing that just conventional therapy isn't working and they don't know. So I went back and studied and I wanted to be that one-stop shop instead of all of those healers that I had to go to and all the training I had to go to to get to where I am. Mm. It's funny though, isn't it? I think a lot of us share that same story on on moving through like 3d ways of healing like talk therapy and and all that kind of stuff onto different modalities and then really being able to step in our own power and connect directly with our guides or, or our team or however you like to um explain it as and I, I think we've all kind of been on that path and we're all trying to shortcut it for everybody else but I think um on that path you learn so much right about what does and what doesn't work and sometimes the um the shortcut is the long route <laughs> it's true the the hard part for me was just i would find people who were great in the beginning and then it would always end up in this abusive situation it was like i would accelerate as much as I believed that I was not smart, I actually could absorb information very quickly and I've discovered that I'm actually really smart. I just learn differently than other people. Yeah. So I would absorb this information and then my teachers would get mad at me. And then they would, you know, it would get weird. And so I was like, what's up with this? That I keep attracting these very narcissistic type of teachers. Yeah. So I had to go inward and look at it. What is it in me? and clear so there's a lot of shadow work that has to be done because you don't get out of this unscathed and one of the other things i do is we inherit ancestral trauma right so 
I take people using hypnosis. I'm also a shamanic practitioner and I go through people's DNA to go back to the root cause, the origin of the ancestor who may have experienced a trauma or some kind of a belief that got passed down gener generationally. And so I've gone back up to 10 generations with people. And no matter what, it, you, that we don't know 10 gener generations back, but it always shows up and it clears. It's, it's always amazing to me how our guides work and, and how it all comes to be. Mm, I love that work. It's so powerful. I think um, it's kind of quite a new in a way because I think a lot of people are still focusing on like childhood trauma and, and starting there. But, you know, you know, through your work and my work that it goes much, much further back than that. And it's actually it gets to be easier. When you when you actually wipe out those earlier timelines as well, yes. I mean, um, so how did you like first get connected with your guides, and and how do you see them? Do you see them as almost an extension of you, or do you see them as separateness to you, or how do you see your own team or guides? Well, this was an interesting story. So early on, when I first started, um, what happened was I was studying hypnosis I started studying um, shamanism and um, mediumship and all of these things I couldn't stop and with that I'm very empathic so I started to I have trouble going out I couldn't go to restaurants or shopping malls because I would start to pick up what other people had on them so all of a sudden my shoulder would hurt and, I, and I'd turn around and someone would be in a sling and I didn't know how to stop it I didn't understand and I was going from healer to healer, asking them to help me stop this. And someone just said, stop it. And I said, I just spent $100 for you to tell me that. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> so they said, okay, I'm going to teach you something. So they had me sit down and look at this giant mirror. And I did this lazy eye stare. And I literally saw one of my guides transpose his face over me in ectoplasm. And it was this beautiful Native American, high cheekbones, six foot two. He was beautiful, handsome, handsome man. And I was like, okay, I didn't know what that was. So the woman that I studied hypnosis with was also a channeler. And I said, I'd love to have a session with you. She And I'm in the room with her and she said, oh, your spirit guide's here. Six foot two Native American, high cheekbones. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, he has a message for you. I said, okay. And she said, he wants you to read a book. And she was looking all over the place and she left the room and a book illuminated across the room. And I got up and I walked across the room and I pulled the, the book out and it was uh, Soul Retrieval by Sandra Angerman, all about shamanism. And I, I, she walked in, she goes, oh yeah, that's the book he wants you to read. I'm like, you never told me the name of the book. <laughs> I took it home and I read it and I was like, what do I do with that? These are people in the jungle. So I handed it back to her. I was with a medium that I was studying with. And she said, your guide is here. He has a message for you. And six foot two Native American. <laughs> third confirmation. Um, they wanted me to do this work. And so there are those who say that our guides are a future version of ourselves a higher version of ourselves, maybe a past life version of ourselves, whatever that is. You know, what I've come to understand is that time is not linear. So mm -hmm. we can be in all places at once. I do past life regressions, life between lives. So we communicate with our guides and visit with our guides. And, and so I just look at them as my teachers and, and, I connect. And in the beginning, I couldn't see. I still struggle with the clair, clairvoyance. It's more of a feeling uh, or a download and uh, a clairsentient. It's a feeling or a knowing. Like when I work with clients, when my confirmations go up my spine and down my arms and I'm with them. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I know. And I had to learn to trust that because in the beginning, I didn't trust myself. And I thought, if I can't see it, then it must not be true. So I thought I was making it all up. Mm. So the biggest lesson for me was learning to trust that intuition, trust the information that was coming to me. And that was the biggest key for me. 
Mm. Oh yeah, trust is massive. I think um, I think a lot of people struggle with connecting via the heart space as well. And obviously, a lot of these beings are very high frequency, and and they come with unconditional love as an energy. And 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 when you struggle with trauma or cages around your heart or or that blockage, it's really hard for them to connect. And and yeah, I love the point about trusting because all this process is is about trusting and taking the next step. It is. is. It totally is. And we have so many different layers. I I have clients come to me and I feel like I become this detective, right? Because is this past life related? Is it multiple past lives? Is it ancestral? So it's this constant searching for the root cause because you can have many. Um, I've, I've worked with people who have had, I had someone who came in for weight loss and I'm like, okay, great. We're going to just work with the trauma from this life. And they weren't budging. We finally, and this was a lawyer who came in for hypnosis for weight loss. I'm like, how am I going to get him to do a past life regression? He was open to it. He was in charge of the food of a village in like the 1600s and he mismanaged it. And the people were starving and they they stoned him to death. And mm. so he had the scarcity around food in this lifetime and could not get enough food. So we had to acknowledge that past life and go back and heal that in order for him to lose the weight in this lifetime. Mm. It's amazing work. It's such fascinating work when you can pinpoint like that. Um, and I think a lot of people are just kind of focusing on this timeline as well you know like I said with childhood trauma and and it goes back so much deeper um and I think a lot of people are just focusing on the mind only whereas you know I don't know what you find with your work Lita but we we know with our work that a lot of um the beliefs can be held anywhere in the body actually as layers because we are we've got DNA we've got trauma etched on those dna and we've we've mainly made out of cells and water so you know water has memory so it can be held anywhere right rather than i think a lot of people get carried away with just the mind the mind we've got to change the mind but the mind's programmed to stay the same so a lot of energy is wasted right we're just the right well when we have a thought the thought in our brain creates neuropeptides and the neuropeptides getting into the science here, they go down and attach to different parts of our body. So for those people who are familiar with Louise Hay, or there's another fantastic book. Um, Let's see, I have it right here. Your Body Speaks Your Mind by Deb Shapiro. It's kind of like a Louise Hay book on steroids where it talks about, and I use this on my clients um, constantly, is that did you have some kind of surgery did you have some kind of physical trauma that happened in your life? Because the, you can hold those emotions that are connected to those periods in your life. Sometimes, so I had an experience, for example, um, one of my best friends from high school passed away and they asked me to do the eulogy. She was hiding things from everyone. I had no idea she was an alcoholic. I went down and I found out a lot of things about her that I didn't know. So on my flight home, my right eye was bright red, like bright red. And the gentleman sitting next to me was like, are you okay? I said, what, what, what do you mean? He said, your eye is bright red. Are you okay? I went and I picked up the book and I read it was, what is it you don't want to see? Mm-hmm. So I had to clear out the guilt, the pain, all the things that I didn't know um, of what I didn't want to see. So when we, we are meant to process emotions, we are not meant to take them in and stuff them down and not deal with them. And then what happens is people are afraid to feel because they're afraid of that pain. And what I will tell you, this pain is much greater when you hold on to it because it has to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. And when you don't process your pain, when you don't process those emotions, they will manifest into something. And that something can be anxiety, it can be lower back pain, it can be shoulder pain, it can be migraines, you name it, because we will manifest things in our body. And I don't want everyone to think that every single thing that it goes wrong in your body is something you created. There are those who believe that, but I also believe that we have karma 
And um, we also have things that are going on in our environment that are poisoning us and our food and our air and our water. So there's a lot of contributing factors. Uh, but I but I like people to kind of take a look at, you know, what is it we are holding back? And we also carry all of our past lives with us in every lifetime. So when you shift, like sometimes people go, yeah, I'm much better writing in the morning. Well, you're probably connecting to a past life every morning that is related to maybe was a writer or more creative. They're like, I have more energy at 10 o'clock. Well, maybe that was a past life that was an athlete. Whatever that is, we move through and access these past lives. Now, there are those who say a schizophrenic is someone who has not integrated their past lives. They're literally bouncing into different past lives. And they literally change their physiological makeup. One, one of the personalities can be diabetic and the other one isn't. Mm -hmm. It's extraordinary mm -hmm. how powerful the mind is. Oh, yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, as well as um, looking at those traumas, and, and, and we call them timelines rather than past lives, because obviously, mm -hmm. like you said, time is linear. But, um, you know, we can draw on that power, that knowledge. I think people sometimes get stuck in the energetic work and the trauma, where actually there's another piece to this, which is the expansion and bringing in that power, that knowledge, that connectedness, those, those creative aspects that are just dying to integrate with your 3D-ness. And just so I think a lot of people get stuck in in, in the, the really hard stuff sometimes, whereas actually if you focus more about bringing it in rather than working all the time on what you have, it gets a lot easier. I, I love that idea. And, you know, it's interesting because I do focus on a lot on the negative for people because they're in pain when they come to me. And what I like to say is your ancestors also brought you gifts, mm -hmm. you know, especially, you know, when they were leaders or artists, musicians, all of those talents that get passed down generationally, we inherit that too. Mm -hmm. And so it's also about being in a state of gratitude. And, and I talked earlier about Sekhmet. Sekhmet took me on a journey to a place, a metaphysical school in Italy. I don't know if you've ever heard of a place called Domin here. But it's, I like to call it, it's the Hogwarts of Italy. Um, it, you, you literally learn it's a school of magic. And when I was there, I studied alchemy. And mm. we literally learned how to move timelines. Mm. And the, it's, you have the capability and power through thought to shift and upgrade your frequency and bring yourself to another level. And when you do that, you're shifting timelines because I don't know how much your audience knows about the collapsing timelines that are going on right now as our frequency is rising going into the 5D. Um, we need to have our own closet in order. We need to clear out our own stuff. A lot of people are suffering right now and struggling. I just went through my own um, in the month of January where all of my old stuff, which we always say, I just worked on that, didn't I? And then there's <laughs> another layer that comes up and another layer because we're all human. And so I had more layers. I had more history that I had to clear out. And now I feel so much lighter, but going through that process mm. is a gift. And you want to look at it that way. Meanwhile, someone's cursing at you. F you, don't tell me this pain is going to help me. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa, but it I'm does. Have to pause for a moment while I let someone in. Just bear with yes. me. Okay. I'm so yeah, we were talking sure about timeline. Going. We had to pause then, just in case this looks yeah. a bit weird in the um transition. But we uh we talk about timelines. Yeah, Lisa, you were talking about collapsing timelines. What's happening right now? Yeah. Yeah. So we are in the process of collapsing old ways of being. And what you want to really be careful of are your thoughts right now, because we're manifesting at a very fast rate. So you want to focus on the positive of what you want, not what you don't want. 
And I think that's one of the, the biggest things. And when you're struggling and going through a lot of ascension symptoms and going through all of the shadow that's coming up, um, be gentle with yourself. I, I was really, um, I was really going through a hard time. So please be gentle and, and reach out for help. Get some help if you're going through a hard time right now, because it's not easy to look at your stuff. It's not easy to let go of all of this on your own, mm. let alone with someone. <laughs> yeah, my, my team are just coming through with, and just saying like the easiest way of navigating this is to always, and to manifest what it is you want more of is to be grateful of what you have right now. I think um, I think a lot of people are trying to skip <laughs> skip ahead sometimes without finding themselves in deep deep gratitude for what it is they have, and and that's the quickest way of actually attracting more. And I don't know about you, Lisa, but I found in this journey that when I released from the need of wanting more, I attracted everything I actually wanted and um it's such a mind fuck at times because you're like I don't I don't need it now but then the universe is like no 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 here you go here's, here's more <laughs> yeah you know what it, it is and it's the surrender right and mm. and that happened to me because I I, I was asking for more right because I went through a period right after Christmas and the new year everything slows down and so I was like, oh, no, 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 no. I, you know, I went into a panic. I was like, oh, what's going to happen with my clients? You know, everything slowed down. And all of a sudden, then it accelerated where I was seeing four and five people a day. And I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> <I'm really tired." laughs> so, be yeah. Be careful what you wish for. <laughs> yeah, it is about be careful what you wish for. So now things seems to be balancing back out again. So it feels good. <laughs> And that's the thing, isn't it? You know, it's about finding balance um, and flow and, and what, what's right for you might not be right for somebody else. And I think at times on this journey, you can get kind of caught in this trap of comparing to other people. But in reality, it's it's your heart, your journey, your way. And everything else is just kind of noise. It, 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 I, I just think it's um, it's not needed um on the journey it can be quite a distraction to focus on what other people are doing it's so true because everyone has their own purpose and um to to go through and compare yourself to others is really not i albert einstein has a quote about comparing a fish to a bird um, you know you're not going to get anywhere with that we all have our own unique gifts gifts and um, what's really interesting about that is, um, I, I took a, I was taking a marketing class one day and this woman said to me, would you like to take this assessment? It'll help you discover your why. And I'm like, my why really? I'm going to figure out my why. Why not? And I took this assessment and it told me what my why was. It changed everything for me. Mm. And so what happened was when I took this, why there's nine different whys it said that I was challenged. I challenged conventional thinking and think outside the box. I was like, all these years that I thought that there was something wrong with me, that I was this you know, outcast that didn't fit in and didn't think like everyone else and that that was this brokenness in me, realized that that was my gift mm -hmm. and that's what made me unique and special and that it was okay to be that oddball. It was okay. But as a child, when you stand out like that, you get bullied. And I was bullied a lot. And so now owning it has been a great gift. And I use that why now as my superpower. And I help people discover their why and their purpose. Mm -hmm. And it was really cool for those people who know Simon Sinek, who did his uh, TED Talk on uh, Start Your Why. And he talks about the importance of living in that why and that passion. And so there's this assessment. I, I, I met with this fellow um, who, who worked with Simon and created the Why Institute. It's not associated with Simon. Um, and there's nine whys. And so my why is challenge. I, I challenge conventional thinking. How I do that is I help people find a better way 
And what I ultimately bring is the ability to make sense out of complicated situations and problems. So I am an out of the box problem solver, hence the hypnosis and shamanism and energy medicine and all of those things, because I didn't want to be like everyone else, because what was being done for everyone else wasn't working. So, so it's like when you get that nugget, when you get that aha moment that lights up everything, it changes everything. And so many of us are living vicariously through our parents or our children, and we're doing what we think is right because we were trained and we were programmed to be a certain way. And, you know, I've had clients who come in 20 years of misery, depressed. She could, dreaded getting up every morning. She was in a job where she was being micromanaged, sitting at a desk, you know, just doing mundane tasks every day and it was all she knew when we did her why she was challenged also and mm -hmm. so she needed to be autonomous and creative and be able to be you know be herself and not have someone hovering over her now there are people who like that kind of work and be inside the rules and create structure that needs to happen accountants engineers and people like that but this was not her so when she learned that she realized that she there was nothing wrong with her she was just in the wrong career mm -hmm. yeah definitely yeah and i love the uh, albert einstein quote as well if you judge a fish on its ability to climb a tree it's gonna forever think it's stupid and yes. i think you know that, that's what conventional schooling does doesn't it i mean i i've been working with my kids since they were two spiritually and we yeah. we talk about everything to do with spirituality and dream space and energy healing and all the things but um i think a lot of children don't have that kind of freedom to to grow and imagine if you knew back at, as a child that you know you you weren't you weren't stupid you were actually just learned in a different way and you were here to do something really completely unique imagine how much different your journey would have been i think about that a lot but here's the other thing that I think. I believe that everything's in divine order because I had to go through that pain so that I knew what that was like that drove me to study the way I did. Now, who's to say if my my mother and father, no one in my family, I always, for those Harry Potter um, fans, they're all muggles. So I never, <laughs> I never <laughs> fit in with my family. They didn't understand any of that even my ex-husband, my children, kind of. It's like, they don't want to know anything until they need something. And then suddenly my daughter will call, could you check your pendulum to see if I should take this job? I'm like, hmm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so, so they've dabbled in it. They understand it. And I say, you know, at some point, if and when they're ready, I didn't wake up until they were probably middle school age, a little bit older than that. And by then, um, mom was weird. So mm -hmm. I have a lot of regret around that, that I have to let go of, that I didn't know a lot of this sooner, that maybe I could have instilled more wisdom of what I have learned now. Mm -hmm. But I also know that the soul picks up whatever they're supposed to get and um, I'm in their life for a reason and everyone has free will so I've had to let that go mm. I think that's one of the biggest lessons as a mom anyway isn't it the free will and the guilt thing and knowing that actually these beautiful souls chose uh, already chose their path with you and so any kind of regret or tension or resistance that you're feeling is just your humanness processing it right because they already chose you they decided <laughs> the good the bad or the ugly you know they chose the ride with you so too late now <laughs> you know what and and they're my greatest teachers and something that really made me think about forgiveness in a great way was when I went through my divorce and they were going through a lot of pain and I thought about how much I was blaming my family members and my parents for a lot of my own pain. And I thought, hmm, how does that feel now to have my children blaming me for theirs? Mm -hmm. And I thought, how does that serve them? How does this serve me? How does this serve anyone to walk around blaming other people for their pain and for all the bad that's happened to them? 
And I thought, I made a list of things that my parents did that served me. All the gifts that I have, the good ones, from my ancestors that I inherited. And I realized that that's made me who I am. And so now I sit in deep gratitude for mm -hmm. all that. And, and when you forgive, it creates miracles. And, and part of the ability to write that book was the forgiveness. It was when I forgave and then I forgave myself because I had a lot that I had to let go of. And one of the people who I forgave was someone who I hadn't spoken to in 14 years. We hadn't said a word to each other. And I got a call out of the blue and this person said, I've noticed things have changed between us. Uh -huh. And I want you back in my life. How can we make this happen? Now, they never apologized for what happened. I didn't need it anymore. Because uh -huh. when you fully forgive, it's gone. Uh -huh. I no longer get triggered by them. And I will tell you, I've talked to people and I say, you might want to consider, consider forgiveness. And they're like, I'm forgiving them. Uh -huh. I'm like, oh, okay, how's that working for you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's big. and you know in your, in your body if you've forgiven somebody because you can say their name you can think about them you can think about some of the, the wrong things they do and I know we don't like to blame right or wrong but um and just be truly grateful right that they put up their hand to play that role to you mm to trigger you so deeply that you go on this journey of um, deep, deep healing and like how courageous really of them to put their hand as the bad guy. That's what helped me get through a lot of my deep traumas as a child and also in relationships as well, because they were playing a part as well. <laughs> it's absolutely true. And I believe that at a deep level. And what's interesting is when I work with my clients and they start to complain, and and I and I will say to them, how would you feel if I told you that you chose this scenario, that you were in charge and you chose that parent and you chose these siblings and you chose these children and you chose the probability, right? Because we all have free will, that you chose a high probability of all of this to happen. Mm -hmm. How would you feel about your life now? It's about owning and taking full responsibility for your life. And I remember there was a book, a woman named Byron Katie. And when I was early on studying um, Loving What Is, and I got halfway through the book and I threw it across the room and I was cursing at her. <laughs> and I was like, but these things happened to me. Mm -hmm. And then I had to come to the realization that what is God doing for me, not to me? Mm -hmm. And yes. Uh, do horrendous things happen in people's lives? Yes. I, 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 I've seen people walk away from some really horrific situations in their lives. And I, and I, and I want to, you know, for people to walk around saying I did this and I, I, I did this to myself and, and put on all this guilt. It's just more, we're in a movie. Uh, we are in a movie and I love to listen to Bashar. I don't know if you, you listen to him at all, but he channels, I think it's an Octarian. And he talks about how we actually live in the spirit state all the time. When we're in our physical human bodies, we're actually dreaming. <laughs> I, mm -hmm. I kind of like that. <laughs> it just feels so real when I pinch myself, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I think um, seeing the 3D reality is just a, almost like a game that you're playing yourself really helps as well, knowing that you're in full control of everything. And I think that takes a lot of practice as well because it means that you have to accept everything, right? You have to accept everything that you create and you also have to have a really high um awareness of your own emotions and how they're affecting your reality as well because that that creates such a massive ripple effect not just for you but for everybody else as well and that's how powerful we are right we we create realities for others as well yes and there's for those people who are not um, aware of the map of consciousness uh dr david hawkins wrote a book called power versus force i have it i keep it next to me but here's the interesting thing. 
there's the lowest, one of the lowest emotions is shame. And that's something we usually take on from others, that we carry other people's shames. And that's that the number 20. Enlightenment runs between 700 and 1,000. The state of love is 500. So you can use a pendulum or there's other ways that you can do to check where you are on that chart and what emotions you're carrying. Because when you keep your frequency low in hatred and anger, what are you actually doing to yourself? When you forgive and you set yourself free and you let go of that shame and fear and all of those things, you're raising your frequency and vibration. When you raise your frequency and vibration, what happens is now you're attracting things that are of higher frequency and vibration and people that are higher frequency and vibration. So when people say to me, How, why should I forgive them? They did this, this, and this, and they were so mean and they were so cruel. I'm like, how long do you want to carry that? Because what you're actually doing is damaging yourself. You're not damaging them. They haven't given you a second thought. They haven't. So when you let go, you're raising your frequency. And here's the really wild thing. We only need a very small portion of light workers on this earth to raise the frequency of the entire planet. Mm -hmm. Because when you radiate that higher frequency, I get the chills. Like, Thank you. I've got these confirmations. But uh -huh. when you raise your frequency at these higher levels, you're bringing these other people up with you. You're mm -hmm. carrying them. And so think about that. The power of what you have when you can let go, when you can forgive, and you can go into the state of unconditional love, thanking them for the gifts that they gave you. And I'm not saying this is easy, right? But it can be when you learn and you experience what it's like to truly forgive. Because this person who forgave me was a huge protagonist in my life, created a lot of hell in my life. And now I talk to this person once or twice a week. I don't get triggered. They've never said I'm sorry. And I'm like, there he goes again. I don't need, I don't need an I'm sorry. I just acknowledge and I know who they are and I don't let them put the hooks in me anymore. Uh -huh. Yeah, definitely. My team would just say boundaries, you know, learning boundaries. Um, I think as you kind of go through this experience and this journey, um, it's not even much about that much change. It's almost about just setting in boundaries and, and knowing that that person sometimes is just projecting onto you. And, and that's not actually your stuff, right? That's not nothing to do with you. It's very, they say, just don't take anything personally at all. Apart from oh, the, yeah, <laughs> the book, The Four Agreements is one of my favorite books. It helped me get through my divorce because um, when you don't take anything personally and you know that everyone's doing the best they can with what they have, mm -hmm. that helped me tremendously because when I look at other people who are lashing out and behaving like a five-year-old and I'm like, wow, they're really wounded. They're in a lot of pain. They're not doing this to me. They, this is where they are. This is how far, this is how wounded they are. And then I can go into a place of compassion instead of getting angry. Mm, yeah, definitely. I mean, everyone, when they are triggered, they go into that um, childhood like state anyway. It's, um, it's what people regress to, right? That's beautiful. So how can people find you, Lisa, if they want to stalk you and what you do and and find out more about you. Yes. Yeah, so um, I have a website, Lisa Shermahorn Coaching. I just changed the URL. I'm about to update everything to lisamindset.com because Shermahorn is a nightmare to try and pronounce, let alone spell. Um, <laughs> I have a YouTube channel. I have Facebook, um, Lisa Shermahorn, um, Lisa Shermahorn Coaching. So um, please reach out to me. I love talking to people. I love hearing their stories. Um, of overcoming adversity and uh, I also have a podcast that I talk to people about their lives and overcoming you know what they've been in in their lives and I'd love to to talk to you about being a guest on my podcast <laughs> yeah let's do it that'd be cool that would be fun so um yeah so 
you can reach out to me any of those ways. And my email is Lisa Shermerhorn and the number one at Gmail because there's actually other Lisa Shermerhorns, believe it or not. <laughs> and uh, yeah, please reach out if you want to know your why uh, or do some hypnosis, some crazy hypnosis, fun stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds really cool. Thank you so much. What we'll do, Lisa, is we'll include all your links in, in the bio in our podcast so people haven't got to run around finding a pen and all that kind of stuff, right? We'll make it easy for people to find you. Thank so thank you. you for being here. I love your energy. It's so um, fun and light and um, very joyous. So thank you for that and bringing your light to the world and your service here. We really appreciate what you're doing. And um, I'm going to stop recording now. So I'm just going to thank our readers and listeners and watchers. And then uh, we'll have a little chat afterwards if you've got five minutes. Beautiful. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you.